Folks, welcome back to So Bad It's Good, presented by Betches Media. Today, I am so thrilled to be able to finally talk to this person. I've been following him for a very long time. I love stand-up comedy, and this dude is on the road. He is killing it and has been forever. He has a new comedy special that comes out on the 12th on YouTube. It is called Dance Fatty Dance. You have seen this dude on Jimmy Fallon. He's written for so many comedy specials as well as his own. One of those you can find on Paramount Plus right now, but I am directly directing everybody to his YouTube channel. I will put all that information in the show notes and his Instagram, which you can find everything. I have, I have given this man a hard duty in the sense that I made him watch Vanderpump Rules and Summer House this week. So already he's going to hate me going into this thing. Um, but we're going to talk about everything is special and all of those crappy, horrible shows that we're watching. The one, the only Dan St. Germain. Welcome to Thank the show. You, sir. Thank you. Yes. Both uh, my half hour special and my new special will be on YouTube March 12th at 8 p.m., but then it'll just be on YouTube. So March 13th on, download it, watch it. It's free, folks. Check yeah, it out. it's free. That's I mean, that's the best thing that you can possibly hear is free. You do not have to even sign up for a streaming service. You recorded this live in Brooklyn, right? Recorded in Brooklyn, Old Man Hustle. Um, yeah, the only thing I asked is everyone says free, just follow me on Instagram, folks. <laughs> All that we're, 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 you know, like that's that's why I call the special dance fatty dance because that's what the entertainment business has become. Yeah, before where you're just like, uh, dance fatty dance, come on, sing for your supper. Um, so kind of right. I mean, like, that's, that's what I was saying. Like, what's it like to be a stand up comedian in the year 2024 when you now have to deal with social media and all of that stuff instead of just going out there and being able to tell your jokes? Um, it's a pain in the ass, like, all <laughs> today. You know, all today I just felt like I was um, just retrofitting little clips for Instagram that I'm going to be releasing in the next couple weeks. And, uh, you know, like I'm laughing when I'm watching Summer House and I'm laughing when like Lindsay's like, I, you know, I made I made the jump to professional influencer. <laughs> but I'm kind of like, I'm not that far off from what she's doing. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm in the, I'm, at this point, she's probably got it more figured out than I do. Oh, so. they totally have it more figured. Like, that's the thing, too, is that going back and then watching or listening to your old material, that can sometimes be really painful to find out what the thing you think actually could get passed around is. Yes. Um, I, at this point, I'll take anything. I'll take whatever. <laughs> Like That's why he's here, folks. He's even video. here. That's how desperate it's become. I don't have any videos of blackface, but if you want to put blackface on me and float it around just so I get more followers, I'll take it, folks. That's how yeah. desperate I am <laughs> in this business. Uh, uh, um, how I, long? I, I'm excited. This is the first time, you know, I've done a lot of podcasts, but I've never talked about Bravo. And Bravo is kind of a new thing for me because. You know, I'm, I'm me and my wife will be five years in, in October, but I she kind of got me hooked. You know, like we both have our two trash centers, which for her is reality TV and for me is professional wrestling. I have not been able to hook her on professional wrestling. I have been able to hook her on horror movies, but she has totally hooked me on on Bravo shows. So like there's yeah, like I mean, that's how I know you a little bit is through your wife. Which, yeah. by the way, in your stand-up special, uh, it kind of, you kind of relate her to potentially sleeping with Danny DeVito at a certain point. Well, she's way uh, hotter than Danny DeVito, but um, although you know, I'm not going to throw Danny DeVito under the bus. I'm sure he's tender. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my wife and I. Uh, yeah, no, she she got me hooked on all these shows. Um, I do think you know we're not talking about it, but like Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, maybe one of the like besides Se Secession, the best show of the last five years, just as we, far as yeah crazy shit that's happened on it. Um, but now I'm, I am, I'm caught up on summer house. I'm caught up on Vanderpump rules. I'm ready to talk. I think I'm more into Vanderpump rules than my wife at this point. That's how, well, I think it's, I think probably because your wife has been into it from the beginning and yeah. it's like almost being at war for like 11, like it's we're 11 seasons into this thing. So we are just dragging at this point. So we need new young blood like yourself that's to come in and remind us why we should like this show. Your guys' relationship to Sandoval is so different than mine. Like, you guys are, like, disappointed in him. I just think he's, like, a fun Zoolander villain. You know what I mean? Like, when I see, when I see him, I'm just like, this guy's hilarious. This is, like, one of the best characters that I've seen. Like, 
He's like he and, and he has no accountabilities and it's the greatest, funniest yeah. thing to watch because he's like the type of guy who like he'll kill somebody while drunk driving and be like, well, uh, he and blame it on his headspace app that he was listening to in the car. You know, like <laughs> he's that kind of guy. I was working on my mental health at yeah, the time. I was, work, That's I was what... working on my mental health, guys. You know, and it's the greatest. I mean, I love it, man. I love Sandoval. Um, I think he's becoming. You know, he's going to become like in the in the lexicon of celebrity. He's going to join like Charo and Gary Coleman, like these weird, <laughs> like, you know, like Beetlejuice waiting room type celebrities. Yeah. Like and Hollywood Square. Like we need Hollywood Squares to come back on again. You know, he should be he should be part of it because, you know, eventually people will get sick of, you know, they already are. They're getting sick of Ariana because like, you know, you can only compliment somebody for so long before you get yeah. sick of it. But like he's just going to be like a goof and like. Kim comparing himself to George Floyd. I mean, this guy's. I mean, it's if you're if you're working it's for next a great level character, it's just like new every soundbite. There's something new and amazing about this. Like he can't he can't keep tripping over his own dick. Can we curse on this? And, I forget. We oh, oh my god! Fuck yes, yes. yes. No, so he, you're, just, you're, he, he just trips over his own dick constantly, and I just know that. I just know him from. I started watching after the the final episode of last season, so the cheating. So that's all I know. You know, so like I love this version of Sandoval. Like, okay, so this has always been him. It's just that we thought he had the purest of intentions, and we thought he was that lovable loon, but we never thought he was potentially. I don't want to say a predator, but that he was going to cheat on this nine-year right. relationship. Yeah, he's just a cheat. He's a bimbo. Yeah. He's a bimbo yeah. cheat. He's the himbo. But what, well, first off, they're in Tahoe right now. Himbo, and himbo. Dan, you're on the road right now with your stand-up. Do you journal on the road? Do you wake up and journal your thoughts? No. <laughs> People tell me I should. I did journal a little this year. I mean, this is really not for this podcast, but my mom passed away. So I journaled a little bit about that. Mine did too, dude. Yeah, Dead Mom yeah, Bros. Dead Mom's Club, yeah. Dead Mom Bros, bro. Uh, so I'm, uh, I do that. I was doing that for a little bit, but for the most part, everything I write is like either for a comedy or for a script I'm writing. And like, and if I'm not doing that, I'm like, like listening to a book on tape. And mostly yeah. I'm watching trash. I'm watching some form <laughs> of trash, whether it's wrestling or Bravo, or like, you know what? I have bookmarked tonight. Like, it's like this horror movie where a plane crashes into the ocean and then the shark movie starts. So like, <laughs> you know, like it's, I, I'm going to watch that for sure. Wait, well, Dan, where did you, uh, was that like something you were like scrolling on Netflix and I found? Did you I read about this? Four months ago. And I think it's on Amazon now. I can't even get the, I, I don't have the name of it, but it literally the movie is the, it's a 747 that crashes into the ocean. And then that's when the shark starts attacking. It's that's perfect. It, it's perfect. It's just, I just love shark movies. They haven't made a good one since Jaws, but I still keep watching them. Oh my God. Well, um, speaking of that, I just watched a, a, a funny, horrible uh, horror movie a couple weeks ago, Thanksgiving uh, by Eli Roth. Oh, that Did was fun. That? Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was yeah it was good. fun. Yeah. Um, okay. So Sandoval though is journaling in this. And I was just thinking how funny it is that when you close up of this journal, which I'm a weirdo and I did, it's literally just like, uh, went to the airport today. Sheena said hi to me. I was very <laughs> tired and it was very like, it's very matter of fact journaling, like no big, like deeper revelations of like your <laughs> emotional spirit. It's just like went to the bathroom, very tired yeah, still. I mean, and at this is going to be like E.E. E. Cummings, you know what I mean? Or like, like oh, that's poetry. <laughs> well, certain journalists, like, like certain Carolina. journal people. Exactly. Like, yeah, no, I think <laughs> chronicling his, his journey. No, that's not. That's this man, fourth grade reading level. Let's be I honest. Truly. Well, I I was also thinking this is potentially the first time he's ever journaled because he thought it would look good on camera. I was like, this could be the first page in his journal, or he could be trying to capitalize off Scandaball and yeah. selling his journal entries of during this time. But after reading that journal entry, it'd be a very small pamphlet of a book, I think. Yeah, it would it would it would be like one of those brochures you get uh at Disney World, like previewing, you know. Um, like Pirates of the Caribbean ride or something. Like, <laughs> be very small. I, I for one would buy it. You know, it's funny. You know, this is not a reality show, but on Sons of Anarchy, the one thing I never, you know, I, I wasn't that into it. But the one thing that was so funny is that Jax, the main character, like would keep reading from his dad's memoir throughout like eleven seasons, and it looked like it was one hundred and twenty pages, and he was still going through it. <laughs> The ninth season, it's <laughs> like he was saying, Well, no, he was sounding the words out, he was like sounding yeah. like was, he was learning to read throughout the, the <laughs> yeah. series. 
Yeah, this um, isn't a crime and punishment. You don't need to like go back and find the meaning in it. Um, See, Dan, yeah, has, I, your, has your wife well, ever tried to get you to go back and watch earlier seasons? Because Vanderpump Rules had a Jax character as well, who was a big cheater. And now he's coming back to reality television in a couple weeks on a show called The Valley that airs right after Vanderpump Rules. Yes. Jax Taylor. Yeah, I saw, you know, I watched Jax on Villains, Villain House. I watched oh, House that. of Villains, yeah. Villain House, House of Villains. I, I dug House of Villains. That was one of our shows, too. So, um, so yeah. Um, yeah, so, well, I mean, who else do you, we have, like, in this episode, Sheena and, Sheena, it's, like, a lot of pressure on her to rekindle her friendship with Sandoval, but the thing is, it almost seems like they were in a nine-year relationship because she is crying so hard. What is your take on the Sheena-Sandoval relationship? I I don't, I well, my question when I was watching, I was like, did they fuck, like, to my wife the whole time? <laughs> Did they, and my wife's like, no, no, they never fucked. It. They never fucked. But this show only gets good when you reveal that someone's been fucking for three years. So <laughs> maybe that'll be the reveal is that like they've been. No, I don't think they have been fucking, but I thought for sure that they had fucked. I mean, Sheena, for me, like, you know, like car, there's like a car wreck moment, two episodes where she where she said, like, we're going to have a good time. She was like doing that recording. And yeah. It was, douche chills like winter like winter is coming chills like when i when she said that um i just think it's like you know like i got we got to the crux of it on this episode right because she's like like we're like why is she defending this guy and then all of a sudden she's like yeah and then one day i woke up and like he gave me five grand and i was like okay yeah. so just say that that's the like I, I told, if somebody gave me five grand like if pol pot gave me five grand it'd be like look i know he's he has his he has his problem <laughs> he's, he's, you know, like, he's all right like, yeah five grand yeah <laughs> no, it's, it is funny that she reveals that, but I was like, he did that a while back. Like, why didn't you make up with him months ago? Why did you save it for these moments? And it is funny. It's like, also, if you're that conflicted, give the money back. You just bought a new house. You have the money to give him back. But it is interesting that it actually plays a part. And you're then mingling in with scenes, like you said earlier, with Ariana and Katie opening this sandwich shop, but it doesn't have the same oomph at all because Ariana's out there just trying to live her life and stay away from the dude that cheated on her for a long time yeah it's i mean it's uh it, it it's it's just you know i think that i i i also think they're in this weird position like we do forget this is only four months since the cheating scandal they like the film that's like four months yeah. after it was right? like no three months it was three months after the cheating scandal broke i think they're gonna run into problems later in the season because eventually like ariana is clearly she got a lot of money from this she like it clearly already is dating up. She like met another guy who's better, and like she, all she can because you could like you could all she's holding on to is like the anger for him. Like there's no like she still loves him. There's no like I have any fondness no. for this guy. So eventually, like that's gonna like kind of have to fade, right? And then what's the show gonna be about? Then we see oh Sheena and James, I guess that's his name. No, not James. The uh, the friend, what, what, whatever the well, uh, Tom Schwartz, Tom Sandoval, yeah. DJ Tom James Schwartz and Sheena made out, or like they they hinted yeah, that. that's what we find out later in the season that p allegedly Sheena made out with Schwartz in Vegas potentially. Yeah, which I think that like because I eventually like this is just gonna become Ariana, you know, making a ton of money off doing Chicago everywhere and you know, Sandoval just like ironically playing at these like, you know, black box theaters all over West Hollywood <laughs> and, you know, just gay guys like ironically liking him, not like really liking him, just like, like, yeah. you know, like just there because they're part of a moment, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting to see where this goes. But that's why it's more fun to watch messes than it is somebody that actually is trying to draw boundaries in their life like Ariana. I think there's a world in which Ariana doesn't even come back next season because why, you know, it's like why like she doesn't want to be friends with her ex. Like she's made that really clear. And I don't think she, I don't think I see a world in which she integrates herself back into this friend group like in Tahoe. Like they're all like prisoners of this. It's funny. Like they're all forced to be friends with each other. And Sheena's husband, Brock, is even like. You know, they're arguing about like press releases and PR agents. And I'm like, this is hysterical that they're talking about leaking stories to the press. Like two dudes in like two dudes in Tahoe talking about you leak this story. No, you leak this story. I thought that was great. Didn't Brock 
abandon his first family in Australia? Was that a thing too? Am I allowed to say that? that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, so you're allowed to cuss you're not allowed to bring he did and that's the thing like he like, did and like for him, he's like giving sandoval the news and i'm like like the business and i'm like don't you have like a family in melbourne or something yeah, like, yeah that's why it's like and i think like finally i think they're on the like the good like the, he's finally doing the child support payments but i don't think he's seen them still yet in like many years and so brock is like playing this guy that's like trying to like well this is what's going on and this is how you know like trying to be this voice of reason but at the same time that's what's so funny is that everybody on this show are complete fuck-ups except yeah. for Ariana and potentially Katie at this point. And that's why they're not even in Tahoe because they would almost ruin the fucked up nature of everything going on in that house. I think, I think you're on, I think you're on to something. Cause I think Ariana, like, you know, she's going to get to a point where she's just going to become a real celebrity. And once you become like a real celebrity, you can't, it's like the Bethany Frankel problem, right? Like once you elevate above, the show and then eventually you kind of have to move on from the show yeah. right but yeah I, in the producers i i think i rather have sandoval on the show because yes. like that's that's where like like ariana you, if I, there's nothing like fun about somebody just getting better you know <laughs> yeah, and, and then, like standing up for their emotional values you're like, like, like okay, that's, yeah that's like good that's a good episode <laughs> but that's not like a season you know, like, like Sandoval's so going to keep giving. Like Sandoval's going to be the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, you're you're totally right. Like you, you know, even with like that New York Times article that you brought up earlier, he just says so many stupid things that you're like, how's he going to get out of this one? How is he going to try to emotionally betray his friends? And like, at, that's what's so funny is that Sandoval's fucked up so many times, and yet he still thinks people owe him apologies. It's great. It's great. Yeah, it's what you want. Yeah. Like if if dude, how boring would this be if he was just like. If he just owned it, like the show would be over, and like, like, because eventually, if somebody if somebody owns something, like, you know, like, it's over, game over. Yeah, like I like well, look, I passed like over ten years ago. I cheated and I owned it, and then you know, like some people were pissed, but then there were people like, all right, well, he freaking owned it, and there's nothing like more you can talk about, you know, like all right, well, it's o it's o it's over, but him not owning it like is perfect for the producers because it keeps that through yeah. line going through that season you know through this season but it is interesting because they are like nearing or in their 40s and it's very interesting to see the same behavior that we championed in their 20s going into their 40s and it's still it's just that they're richer they have houses cars bills to pay and i think that's yeah. the really scary thing where you're like this is like a horror movie at times oh, because they all yeah. depend like they all made money off of scandal like they all made money so Sandoval thinks in some ways they owe him apologies. What is your thoughts on Lala? She's the one that's like, you ain't my mama. You ain't my, my daddy. You oh, can't yeah. talk to me like that. No, she's the one. Her? She left her husband, her, the guy, the father of her kid. Randall Emmett. Like, yeah. Yeah. He kind of had like a, he had like a tryst with two girls. and then the Oh, he had many, tri he had many, like a lot of shit came out. Like j the two girls is where he got caught, but there was yeah. a lot of other women he, along the way. He kind of looks like a better ver looking version of the really short fat guy from 90 Day Fiance. Yeah. Big like, Ed, Big Ed. I mean, he's like a better looking version of Big Ed. I I mean, I, I do like her. I, you know, part of, part of it too is like, I will say it's like her and Carl, like from Summer House, they seem to have like real recovery. So that's kind of cool to watch. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I, I guess I like her. I, but it's so funny because you guys, you guys are so enmeshed in the show, and I don't know the history. Of, we're like apparently like everyone in the cast has been rat fucking each other for the last nine seasons. So it's like yeah. anytime I start to like someone, my wife would be like, "Yeah, we keep gonna <laughs> fuck somebody over in season four. Like, there's there's by the way. Like hard. you guys, there's there's actually a great uh, a bit in Dance Fatty Dance, the comedy special you can find now on YouTube, where you talk about your wife even ruining sporting events for you yes, because yes. she'll like point out like that dude's a rapist that yeah. day, that guy that got tackled, that guy killed yeah. somebody, and I, I thought I just like that's wear my Lawrence Taylor jersey and not read his Wikipedia page, Sarah. Come on. <laughs> Uh, but you're right. These people have been rat fucking each other for so long. So eat like even Lala, who you say, I like her. I could tell you 10 things that I think Lala did that was really shady, but it's so funny because she is so good on television and she has such a big ego and she knows how to communicate where like, if she fights with Tom Sandoval, it's game over. Cause that guy can't string two sentences together, you know? 
Yeah, and I mean, he seems to be degenerating in front of our eyes, too. You know, the whole Vanderpump rules, it feels... Have you ever seen Escape from L.A., the, the sequel to Escape Yeah, Kurt Russell, yeah, yeah. Kurt Russell, you know the part, and Bruce, I think Bruce Campbell's... The surgeon? Like, yeah, the, the, there's like a plastic surgery cult that's in L.A. Yeah. where they like just like grab people off the street and like rip their faces <laughs> off. And, like, that's what like, the Vanderpump rules, like kind of reminds me of like, we're, we're like this like weird like creepy matriarch lisa vanderpump is like the spider woman in the back um it's it's very macabre it's 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 interesting i i, I enjoy watching it but i think that i enjoy watching it because i don't i i kind of walked i i started watching this already thinking it was a freak show and i think some people took have it been, seriously yeah, I have like been yeah. betrayed by these characters. I like yes, that's that's what it is. I don't have any, but I don't have any connection to Tom and Ariana's betrayal. All I see is just like, oh, this guy's like king of the douches, and it's hilarious. Oh, I mean, we were. I mean, I was so in deep as well as so many of us out there. It was like literally like he cheated on me, and that's where it's like I got to go out and touch grass because this is really ridiculous. But it was so funny. Like, I really, my mom was dying at the time. I was watching this every week, and I was yeah. livid. I was pissed about so many things, and I was yeah. like, "This fucker, man, this fucker!" And it's hysterical because yeah. none of us watching this even look at our own behavior. We're just like this asshole, and he is an asshole. But it is funny because we're all kind of assholes, just not to that extreme. He's bad, but it's also like I mean, I remember like the news about him was released, and then a week later, some of the names on the Epstein list were released, <laughs> and I'm like, I think people are more upset about Scandal. You know, well, like, to be fair, we Sandoval might have been on that list. We do not know yet. There, that's like. Well, in that case, I think he was one of the victims, uh, you know, in that case. But, like, uh, yeah, he's – I don't I, – you know, I, I just look at him as this, like, kind of cartoon character, you know? And I, I, yeah. I'm here for it, man. Well, and uh, they all came out to L.A. to be actors, musicians, all of this stuff, and they wound up on reality television. So that's already some kind of weird lottery that, like, they all wanted to be this, and they became this other thing. And so now they lean so hard into this because – like you said with Bethany Frankel or Ariana is that, you know, only a handful of them ever get to reach that upper echelon of mainstream celebrity. If not, they have to now try to figure out the rest of their lives because at this point, Tom can't go get a job at Kinko's or like office. Like, you know, he can't go get a regular job at this point. I mean, he's too famous. I mean, I did have, when I was at LA fitness, when I was like in LA, like writing on a show, I had like a personal trainer and it was like one of the guys from the real world. So it's like there is a re like a reality. Like you could do like one season, and I think just then have a normal job. But he's too he's like too famous to have a normal job again. Yeah, so it's like, like Tom Tom in accounting. He was the guy that was on Vanderpump Rules for eleven seasons, <laughs> and now he's in our HR department. Um, now Summer House, you know, it's interesting because I think these two shows they're on in the same week. And for me, I can watch Summer House and I can enjoy it so much more than Vanderpump Rules because I, you know, I was too, in way too deep with Vanderpump Rules. But, you know, we're 3 episodes into Summer House. Have you watched all 3 episodes or did you just watch this week? I've watched all 3 episodes. I've been watching that show since season 5, so I'm all caught. Okay. So we're I in season 8 now. The last season I watched was like the Hannah Burners when she left. When she and she's a stand up. Do you like do you bump elbows with her on the road no, ever? We don't really we don't we don't uh traverse the same circles. But um yeah, I haven't been I, I've watched for about four seasons, five seasons now. Um I do think it's interesting. Because I do think Carl's like a genuinely good guy. And maybe I'm wrong. Like maybe that's I'm hooked. Like you were hooked with Sandoval. <laughs> and like in two season when we find out like Carl's part of an organ trafficking operation or something. <laughs> and I'm gonna feel betrayed. But like I actually think Carl's a pretty good guy, knock on wood. Yeah, and I'm sure I'll be disappointed at some. Well, listen, point. we're guys, so we all have done something completely idiotic. But you're right; yeah. like he he seems so committed and proud of his sobriety, and yeah. that's why he really was. And I think the audience was kind of shocked when Lindsay, feeling you know weirdness about being in the summer house, immediately says, "You're on something, cocaine, Carl. All of this stuff. Of course, you would be so livid because that's the one thing that he's like tried to get right." And he finally feels like he had, and this is the number one person in his life. That's like really painful. And it kind of, we finally get a little context of why he eventually breaks off this relationship. Yeah. Well, 
I think after watching this week's episode, I think Lindsay has some un undiagnosed personality disorder because there's a moment on this week's episode and you can see it where Danielle kind of is like, do you want me at the wedding to Lindsay? And you can tell that pisses Lindsay off, but she doesn't register it. And then two scenes later, she reveals Danielle's secret. She's like, Danielle is the one who waked that shitty story to you. She's like, I'm like, oh, you're throws trying her to under the bus to Paige in the kitchen, her throws her bus. directly under the bus. And Paige like Paige like throws it away. Paige doesn't seem to care, but it seems like she's, like, she's like, okay, now I'm going to get everybody to hate fucking Danielle. But the problem is, is that I've watched this show long enough now that Lindsay has been shitty to so many people on that show that she has nowhere to go. So, like, she's going to be the ultimate villain this season because Carl was her last bastion of someone rooting for. And once that's gone, she's going to have to go to a new show. Like, that, and everybody root, everybody loves Carl to it, like, and everybody roots yeah. for him, even with all of his like fucked upness. And everybody's kind of always been against Lindsay in certain ways. And I'm a huge Lindsay fan, but at the same time, it's hard to defend some of these things because it's the same behavior we've seen with from Lindsay. And it's like, I hope she's watching this back and is actually learning something from watching herself on this because it's like, of course, somebody would potentially not want to be with you if you are questioning the one thing that is actually. Like they're proud of because even Lindsay reveals in this episode, the guy can't get a job. He's like, he's got to find what he wants to do with his life. Yeah. Well, to be the one thing I'm going to side with Lindsay on as someone who doesn't drink, I do think a non-alcoholic sports bar is the worst idea I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, I, don't, like, really like, I don't think that, I mean, like, look, I, I drink a Diet Coke at a bar, but I don't think, I'm, I don't think there's going to be like a, a group of guys are like, let's go to watch the Colts game and drink virgin pina coladas. That's <laughs> that's that's not going to work. So I, I do agree with her on that. I was like, this is a terrible idea. Carl's going to lose a lot of money on this idea. <laughs> but she does it. She does it. She brings, you know, she's constantly bringing a gun to a knife fight. Right. So it's like she can't just like gently like like. You know, when you love somebody and they like have a dumb idea, you have to kind of like gently unwrap it and be like, is this really going to work? You know, you don't just go like, no, that's stupid. And her thing is just no, that's stupid. So, uh, you know, you see why this you know marriage is just going to completely fall apart or there's a game. And she's yeah. And she's always been that direct. But it is sad when you're like, oh, man, these guys are like headed to the all. They have a wet late. They have a wedding website that was very intense. Like we see Danielle open their wedding website and it's like Lindsay and beautiful calligraphy. And then it's like Carl, like Carl <laughs> and like Danielle's shocked by the wedding website. I just think it's fascinating. And this is what reality television is great for is that we actually get it's like we already know the Titanic sinks. So we yeah. get to see the things like we get to see the icebergs and like we all see it before they do and we watch the dissolution of this and we it's captured on camera which of course is horrifying but now we're like realizing oh okay this is exactly why this shit is happening because of Lindsay's behavior towards Carl yeah and um she kind of tried to get a in front of it too because in between seasons she was really like dumping on him and like going on different podcasts where she was like, you know, saying you like, and I think she knew that this was going to be a bad season for her. So she's like, all right, maybe I can change the narrative before it starts. And he but kept quiet. He didn't say a thing. Like he was actually let her go out and just do that, which in retrospect, I kind of think, well, that was really nice of him to let her do that. And just like, and also he wasn't out there with a shitty karaoke band like Sandoval next week's episode in the preview. She compares him to Tom Sandoval. She's like, this is like Sandoval. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's just like when you're in a political argument and you call the other side Nazis, like, you know, like both, both like Democrats and Republicans have called each other Nazis at different point because it's like the ultimate go to. It's either like yeah. Nazis or pedophiles. Those are the two things like you call the other side. And then like you can't argue. You're like, well, that's yeah. the worst thing. So I can't argue with that. Sandoval's become reality Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god thank god thank god the state of the union joe biden didn't bring up sandoval or something or marjorie taylor green was like sandoval you know biden, biden makes so many like like dumb social media moves that he would be like all right we got the cast of vanderpump rolls and they're like great you have ariana right no they like sandoval right and <laughs> yeah wait ariana is that the good one oh, no now <laughs> um 
Also, we have Kyle and Amanda Batula on Summer House. And I will say they're kind of like the sleeper mess of a relationship. We're all focused on Carl and Lindsay. But the first two episodes, these guys, like Amanda has seemed like she had it with Kyle. You know, I remember when they were first on the show, they were always getting busy in the ba- the bedroom. We don't even see them touch each other or even like in this episode, he slept in a bed with West. Like he just passed out in a bed with West. What do you think of Kyle and Amanda? He's, there's way more. Yeah, it seems like there's more sexual tension with him and the other bros in the house than there is yeah. with her right now. He loves his bro time. Yeah, I have a take on this. I think that what happened that Kyle is like a like a kind of like a puppy who keeps wetting himself, and now Amanda got really actually cute two puppies, two dashes. So she has that. She actually <laughs> she has that part of her fulfilled already. Like that. <laughs> She has a cuter, she has two cuter versions of Kyle's and they don't get drunk and like play play trance music at 3 a.m. They just go to sleep. So I think like now that she's got those two dogs, she's like, why do I have Kyle? Like, what's the point of having Uh, Kyle when I have these two? That's the best thing you've seen. You're, you're, You're so right about that. And in this episode, he almost loses one of the dogs. Like one of the dogs almost, he lo- and I was like, oh shit. Like that's, that's by the way, that would end Summer House if all of a sudden one of the dogs is just gone. Like there's yeah. no coming back from a lost dog potentially on a reality show. That's the only way that you could get somebody to hate someone more than Lindsay on that show is if Kyle loses one of those dogs, then he would replace Lindsay. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. No. Um, also, we have the two new cast members, West and Jesse Solomon. Uh, Jesse mm-hmm. Solomon, we found out, only has one nut. He's a two, yeah. uh, twice uh, twice cancer survivor. And this West is goes on a date with Sierra at the end of this week's episode. What do you think of the new guys? I like West. I think everybody likes West, right? Yeah, West. He's a, he seems fun, yeah. He seems like a normal guy. I mean, you know, like... It's going to be interesting to see what happens with him and Sierra, right? Because Sierra's like this stunning model. And he's like, you know, a normal looking dude. So it's like after they start dating, is he going to, you know, like, are are they, are, I could see either of them getting bored with the other one, you know, like for different reasons. She could yeah. just be like, I should be with a model. And he should be like, no, I need to be with somebody who like, you know, has some sort of semblance of charisma. <laughs> it's so bizarre. <laughs> Sierra's like that. It's it's this weird thing where she's like super hot. And then you're also like, but is there career? Is there career? Like, there's no. Person- I feel like she's work. I feel like she's working up to charisma. Like, it's just still like it's like almost her being around people with personalities has given her a little bit more. She met like a little gnome in the woods, like when she was going through puberty, and he's like, "I'll make you the most beautiful person in the land, but you won't have a personality." <laughs> All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, and so she oh. she made that devil's bargain. Um, the other guy, no nut. Um, he seems. Jesse, yeah. Uh, I mean, like he's serving the purpose of being too aggressive with Paige, so Kyle can feel better about himself by yelling. Like, there's always like at one point, like like the last couple seasons, where Kyle's like got on his moral high horse and be like, "Bro, you can't do this," and it's because like he's been he's been like drunk and vomiting in a crock pot <laughs> all season. But then he finds like one one little area where he can be morally superior than the guys in the house. Yeah. Like, he did that with Luke. I think he did that with like one of the guys from Southern Hospitality. Um like he always like it's like his it's his only way. Like he talks about like he's like guys, guys, but seriously it's about toxic masculinity. And you're like, <laughs> where is this coming from, you fucking one <laughs> out? You know? No, we actually he is gonna have that scene with Jesse, and it's so funny because Paige in this episode says Jesse Solomon like touched her leg, and that is inappropriate. You can't do that. And I also I was like, well, wow, Paige, I don't think gets hit on a lot, um, which is like I, I it seemed like that. And also Craig, she dates from Southern Charm, and she said Craig, Craig would would stomp Jesse Solomon, and I was like, oh, Craig, I don't, I don't, I don't think Craig would stomp in, I, and Craig would be like, don't, don't hit the face, don't hit the face. Yeah, like Craig wouldn't do. I mean, you know, maybe I mean, maybe if he stole an eight ball from Craig, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. That's I, old school I, Southern charm. I don't think that that would happen. No, the only guy on 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 both shows, the only guy who I think could really throw down and fight 
is uh, Sheena's boyfriend, that rugby guy. With Brock, the yeah. Guy. Like, I'm like, okay, that guy could uh, that guy could actually do some damage, you know? Dude, he uh, could crush anybody with those thighs. Like, yeah. I've got big thighs, but he's got muscular big thighs. He just, he looks like a convict, you know? He looks like some a role Ed Hardy would play in an indie movie coming up. <laughs> uh, you know, and so, uh, yeah, I, th that's the only guy I think is actually physically intimidating on this show. Um, and of course that's the one I've talked the most shit about on this uh, episode. So maybe that'll be the one. Perfect. That I can't wait to introduce you guys. I'm going to tag him in one of these clips. It'll be great. I I'll, I'll, okay. I, you know what? I'm going to, I think I'm going to stay on the periphery of that celebrity scene. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Like Paige has this kind of thing where, you know, it, she really does. It almost feels like the old studio system where like she comes out for her scenes, like she's almost like Lucille Ball coming out for her scenes, and then she goes back in her room and yeah. like you know, does whatever she wants to do for like because she doesn't really interact unless it's time for her in a scene. Like you never just see her like kind of hanging, hanging out. And everyone gave her shit for that, but it's kind of the smartest thing to do, right? Like that's yeah. like when you preserve yourself. Like she's not like she's like okay, I'm gonna come out you know, for my storyline scenes. And then I'm just going to retreat back. Um, you know, she's just acting, she's actually acting like somebody who's in like a pretty happy relationship where she's like, I'm just going to come out for my work. And then I'm going to yeah. go back and hang yeah. out. Which I mean, everybody says that her and Craig won't make it to the altar. They're not even engaged yet. But I, I think, Oh, I think they're actually going to totally make it because it does seem like that is a solid relationship that they actually like will have like an argument or a conversation. And I think those are usually planned out between the two because it's like the same conversation and again and again. But I think they are totally into each other. And I think they both like being reality stars and they both like yeah. being, they, they know they're more powerful together. Yes. Um, so I think that and I think she's kind of I, I think also she looked at hannah's arc and was like all right i can be bitchy but i can only get too bitchy i can only get i i want to i i can fly but i don't want to fly too close to the sun so yeah, like, i never i never forgave hannah for that the luke season yeah, i don't know so if you watched luke, that luke when she I, I freaked out that, on luke yes i remember this so i think Paige has this thing where she's very smart and she'll jet she'll take a dig but then she'll come back and she'll take a dig. And I'm posing to Lindsay, who's just like, Tomahawk, I'm going to throw everything at you. Like, Paige picks her spots, you know? And because of that, I think that, like, the next incarnation of the show, like, I think Paige is going to be around for a while. I think she's going to be the yeah. one that's going to make it through. Oh, totally. I think, and I, I also think there's a possibility, like Ariana and Bethany, that she goes to that next level of mm -hmm. celebrity because she has yeah. all of these other things going on. Like she has the podcast, all of this stuff. So I think she actually is that, and she's not, yeah, like you said, Lindsay throws those tomahawks. She allows herself to be that vulnerable and potentially look like crazy on TV where you're right. Paige actually takes notes and dials it back and is like very middle of the road and she can go higher and lower, but always course correct. Yeah, Lindsay's very messy and Paige is like a silent assassin. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, and Danielle, Lindsay's friend, you know, or Lindsay's ex friend that they're trying to rekindle the friendship, even though Lindsay throws her under the bus in this episode, Danielle, I talked to her last week on this podcast and I said, it seems like she's one of those people that is used to being the friend. And when she steps into the spotlight, it's really sloppy because she was on uh, a show called winter house. I saw winter that. House. I've, yeah. I've seen every winter house too. So yeah, you know, <laughs> Danielle was kind of hard to watch on Winter House, man. She yeah. Was, it was a little, like, it was a little desperate. And it's one of these things where, like, clearly she's, like, heartbroken. Oh, she's also does this pet peeve that, like, everyone, every girl in a breakup does. Where she's like, oh, this guy was gaslighting me. Oh, this guy was gaslighting. She, like, says gaslighting over and over again when you're like, okay, man, maybe some of it was gaslighting. Maybe some of it is you're hurt and you came on too fucking strong. Maybe some of that is what it yeah. is well and she told me she filmed that season she left thinking it was a great season for her she left though and like wow i really killed it this season and yeah. she was shocked when that's what actually came out and i thought that's got to be the worst part of being on reality television is really not dialing in to what they're what the audience is going to pick up on about your behavior and I, i'll say this too like the first thing that i ever did in show business i was on this like mtv reality true life thing and I was so wait the doc the docu series true life yeah the world of Jenks do you remember that show dude yeah I, I had Jay yeah. I had uh, Andrew Jenks on the podcast a couple months yeah, ago yeah dreamy eyes uh, I was on <laughs> world of Jenks 
And I was so paranoid that I would only let I would only let them see certain things. I was very clear to not come off like a dick. But because of that, I don't like some people like comedy fans like it, but it wasn't good. Like, I don't think reality fans would have liked it because I didn't really show ass the way that you need to show ass on these shows, you know, warts and, and all. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's why like Danielle and Liz, Lindsay are such great characters because like, like what they think is like them looking good is actually like completely exposing themselves, you know? And yeah. when you, when you do that, it's like, it's great for us, but you know, I get it, it just like, it seems like uh, Danielle's just one of those ladies who, like, especially on the show where she'll be like, like, single girl summer. And it's like, no, you want a boyfriend. We all know you want a boyfriend. You just want a normal boyfriend. You're so heartbroken. And it's like, she seems cool. She's pretty. She has, like, a great job, you know? Like, so it's like, she's smart. She's actually one of the people who seems like she hasn't got, you know, and she just seems like totally fucking insecure. That's her problem. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And w which is very relatable to so many people that watch it. So they, that's why yeah. it's like, yeah, no, I get what's going on. The Sandoval thing too, is that back on Vanderpump rules, that was the argument they had on the boat between him and Lala. He's like, I've shared everything on this show. You, you've hidden like all oh, you, you haven't shared your life. And that's what it's so funny is when you start getting these meta fourth wall breaking arguments about what right. we've shared on the show, like, you know, and that's, that's the funny thing on, on Vanderpump Rules has been on so long that they're, they're now talking about what they've hidden through the years and not shown on camera. And and always what makes me laugh is like thinking that like right next to these guys is a producer or a key grip with like a black T-shirt on and sweatpants and like queso <laughs> stands from the craft service table. And they're just like tired, you know, they're just exhausted. Because yeah. I know like I know production life. You know, and they just have that like like five o'clock shadow, you know, uh, you know, like so it's like probably the real trauma is from these people shooting these reality yeah stars. well that's what i always said like there were certain scenes in old real housewives where they were like dude like romantic bathtub scenes where like a guy would like candles and i was like i was just thinking of the poor cameraman in cargo shorts going home that night to his family yeah. going Oh man, I had to watch people dry hump each other in a tub and I had to capture it. And like, and the thing is, everybody says like scandal and all that stuff. Oh my God, it was so fake. It was so scripted. And I'm like, you guys, you got to, at the end of the day, they're not thinking about it even as intensely as we are. It's their job. Like they're literally yeah. going like, I've got to film this. We've got to put like story segments together and get the fuck out of here. They're not writing up scripts. They're talking about possibilities, but at the same time, this is just a day job for these people. And, and all these producers know, like, like we, talk, we talked briefly about villain house, you know, like when Amorosa accused the girl who ended up winning, I, I don't I've heard her name of hitting her. And yeah. like, and she, she didn't, you know, like they went back and they looked at the footage and it was like she like brushed up against her. But all these producers know that she didn't, but they still have to go through these hours of fucking, you know, Amorosa <laughs> calling her agent. And like, you just have to sit there and watch this fucking slow motion car yeah. wreck. You know, like and, well, and, most of these shows would stop if you would actually be able to use the footage they've already captured in the moment. You'd yeah. be like, we can clear this up real quick. Like that's why it's so funny. Is that like, we're, guys, we have this on film, and they still allow all of this stuff to continue. Um, you also, well, I mean, first off, actually, uh, how did you, how did you, what, like, how did you get into stand up? Like, what was, what, what was that always the dream? Like when you were a kid? Uh, no, I, I think that at times I've wanted to be like. Uh, you know, a, a legitimate like writer guy, I think more than anything else. And I have written on a bunch of uh, shows, um, but uh, you know, I wanted to be a playwright in college. Like I had a play produced. And then when I got out of college, I didn't get into playwriting grad school. I, I didn't get into playwriting grad school. And I was kind of like, I got into like, and I didn't like acting that much anymore. So, but I knew I was dec a decent enough performer. So I was like, well, let me just like perform where is something where I can just perform every night and like test shit out. And like stand up seemed like the perfect marriage of like writing and performance, you know? And it was very much, you know, stand up, uh, stand up like uh, is more like a sport. It's like cerebral opposing to like, uh, like, you know, acting, you're like losing yourself in the moment and stand up. It's like, no, like I'm in control, you know? Like, so like, I kind of like that aspect of it. And then I realized like, there's still the biggest high in the world is, you know, writing a new bit and it working, you know, like that's yeah. better than anything else. And having that, you know, 
you know, and, and being able to jump into that, you know, that was like, you know, if, I, if I'm an actor, I always have to rely on someone casting me or production. If I'm a writer, I have to always rely on someone staffing me or putting up my work. But with stand up, I can kind of create my own luck. So that's 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 what. Tracks. Yeah, I mean, that's how I felt about podcasting. But with yeah. stand up, you have that audience to deal with. And that to me is the scariest part of all of it, you know, because I would imagine. Are there still nights that you just completely bomb? Yeah. Yeah. And especially now I'm building up, you know, this specials out. So it's like. I'm trying to build up a new 40, you know, 45 minutes or an hour. So it's like, you know, I have 20 minutes of it, but I got to add in another 25 and then I'm going to get that one up and then I'm going to have to build up again, you know? So like tonight, are you going to try out new material tonight? uh, Hopefully it's going to be all new from the special. Yeah. From, from nothing that was on the special. So it'll hopefully I filmed the special last June. So hopefully this will be all new tonight. I, and I'm only doing like 25 minutes. So it's, that should be fine. Um, and, and also it's like, you kind of change as a person too. Like, like, you know, like I look at all my bits from my twenties and stuff and it's like so much of it about, is about like, Oh, like, Oh, dating's rough. You know, like, and it's like, I'm not that guy anymore, you know? So, uh, marriage is rough. Yeah. Marriage is rough, you know, but people don't sit They're like, Oh, you're going to talk about marriage. You're going to talk about dating. I'm like, yeah, I'm a person. I'm going to talk about like one of the fundamental things in your life, which is having a romantic companion, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, uh, it's everybody said like airline material was terrible. And then Louie had that amazing bit on Conan about sitting on an airplane and everyone's like, Oh, wow. Okay. Well, this is good again. You know, like, so I think that like, that's kind of, you know, like it's, it's finding a way to like take that normal human experience and not make it hack, you know? Yeah. Having said that I've definitely, like I got a YouTube comment today where it was like, I was like, I posted some video. This is like from an old uh, special. And uh, somebody's like, I've heard this bit a million times before, but keep trying. And I was like, so oh, <laughs> thank you for adding the positive. Keep trying, you know, like I, I really just thought you were shitting on me, but it turns out, you know, you're, <laughs> you're encouraging Robert Williams in the Goodwill hunting movie of my stand up career, you know? Well, people don't realize how much hard work goes into all of this. I mean, you're in a hotel room right now. And my thought always with that is that like with anything that I like, if I, when I used to act or like do plays or do theater, it would always be hanging over my head of like, I have to get up on stage later tonight and I would not be able to shake that the entire day. So I would have to live in that feeling. And, you know, it was great once you were on the stage, but it was hanging over my head the entire day. Where are you at in terms of like, is it so um, patent to you where you're like, no, I can totally throw it away, have a normal day. Uh, or are you always thinking about like, eventually I'm on stage tonight? Well, you know, I mean, I'm opening for Dan Soder, who's like one of the best comics in the country. Um, his audience is awesome. The 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 shows are already sold out. Um, and his audiences love stand up. So like, yeah, it's very it's like like last weekend I was headlining at Dallas Comedy Club, and that was a lot more pressure because I was like, I I was, you know, I was the end thing that they saw, you know, and I was making sure asses were in seats, you know, and when I have a lighter show, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's like pressures on me. So in this particular weekend, like, it's like I'm hanging out with one of my best friends and uh, who's a great comic who already has an audience. This is pretty easy. But if I was like headlining, like, you know, that that's a little bit harder. So it really just depends on the situation. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think a lot of us are, I like used to romanticize stand up because it was like, you would read all of these stories and books and like, you know, what it's like to be out on the road and like the audience interaction and how that can take you down or like elevate material. And now everybody's in the, uh, I think the, the Matt Reif ism of it all of crowd work, crowd work, crowd work, yeah. you know, is like, that's the big thing. Now, do you do a lot of crowd work? Um, it depends. Like tonight I probably won't because I don't have as much time when I'm headlining, I do. I usually do like five or ten minutes up front. Um, I don't post a lot of crowd work because I think it's kind of cheap. But uh, I do. I mean, I posted one crowd work clip this year. Like in the year of 2024, I've posted one crowd work clip. But uh, I understand why comics do it because it's a way for you to not burn material. Um, but I'm just, you know, I'm I'm kind of like I'd rather I'd rather somebody see a bit, you know, like that's just yeah especially now, like I'm just trying to harvest eyeballs at this point, but maybe, I, maybe I should be, you know, I should be, I should be doing more crowd work and, you know, you know, the, the, the stock lines and everything else, but yeah. No, it just seems to be so much part of the conversation now. And I'm not 
I'm not yeah. a fan of Matt Reif. I mean, like, no offense to, you know, not, but like, it is interesting. They always just, you know, like this dude's all crowd work and wait till he actually has to like really. But anyways, uh, you mentioned something at the very beginning uh, about wrestling that you watch pro yeah. wrestling. And I have a lot of listeners that are so into pro wrestling. Oh, that's interesting. Can you, can you explain to me? Podcast, guys, Rest, wrestle roasts. Um, I'm on there every week with uh, like uh, one really funny lawyer and two other funny comedians. So it's called Wrestler it Roast? It's called Wrestle Roast. We used to do wrestle a roast. wrestling roast every week, and then like we did that for like two years straight, and we're like, let's just talk about wrestling. I'm sick of the roast part of this. But we still have the name. So, um, yeah, it's it's very, um, you know, the reality world kind of reminds me of wrestling in the late 90s where people, the, the guys didn't have, like, the filter that they do now. Now a lot of these wrestlers are super fucking savvy. Like, in WWE especially, like, you see Cody Rhodes talk and you're like, are you running for, like, like Senate? <laughs> like, like, everything just seems so calculated, opposing to, like, Lindsay, who's, like, you know, acting like, uh, you know, Shawn Michaels on pills in 1998, you know? Like, so there, there is some, like... There is some some bizarre parallels, but yeah, I'm a, I'm an avid wrestling fan. Like I'll be watching SmackDown after the shows tonight. Um, but there, I mean, there is a reality show element to this, or I mean, it's characters and high, like big old characters, but they have yeah. the behind the mat footage where they're behind the scenes, you know, doing yeah. scenes with each other. The Rock came back a couple months ago, right? And, yeah, the Rock, you know, I mean, like, The Rock has been great coming back. Is he? The only thing that's annoying about The Rock now is that on Instagram. He's like breaking in the wheel, like being like, no, I'm playing a heel character. And you're like, dude, just go with it. Like, just go with the thing. I know like your whole thing is like you're an entrepreneur, but like just just wear this fucking hat for real. Like wear it for 100 percent right now. Don't like don't be Dwayne. Be the rock, you know. <laughs> uh, and so I mean, that, that's like but I find that like there's not a lot of great reality WWE shows, you know, like I didn't, I thought the Bellas was kind of boring. Like I just, I, I tried to watch um, Love and uh, Wrestling or whatever, the one with Bianca and Montez. And like, they seem fine, but like, you know, again, because that company is so, like there's so many dollars and cents, you know, attached to the Bianca Belair character that you really can't get into the nitty gritty of the person because they're going to be very protect. You know, there's still that WWE thing of like, I got to protect the business. And because of that, like reality shows and WWE, like that's why Beyond the Mat was true. Beyond the Mat's the best one of the documentary. documentary. Yeah, that yeah. was great. And it's also why, as soon as it came out, Vince completely cut support from it. Like Vince, originally, Vince McMahon, WWE, yeah, yeah, Vince McMahon. Originally, WWE was going to like market this, and he saw this, and he was just like, oh, "I can't, we we can't be a part of this." <laughs> we did not know that what Vince was doing behind the scenes was way worse than what was it. <laughs> so yeah, talk about Epstein logs. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. That, if you read the I, the Vince McMahon, so, you know, he's now had to like completely to get divorced from the company that he helped create. I mean, like, you know, I, I right now I'm actually. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate. I'm developing this really fun show with Dan Soder and Stone Cold Steve Austin for uh, Peacock. Um, and hopefully it comes out. But TKO has nothing to do with Vince anymore. They just came out yesterday and they at, they were asked about Vince. And it was a definitive, like, we don't know why he sold the stock this week because we wouldn't know because we don't talk to him and we have no idea what his moves are because he's not allowed in here. Like, it's clearly just like they're... They are cutting that guy. They are just cutting the head off the snake. They're done with it. And also, team. I mean, but also if you are doing that kind of shit, don't grow a pencil thin mustache all of a sudden. Like he's like, like, like what a way to make yourself even look scarier. I was like a pencil thin mustache on Vince McMahon. Yeah, the only thing that wasn't surprising about Janelle Grant's deposition was like the part I, I was expecting to read a part where Janelle, where Vince tied her to train tracks, you know, like, like yeah, exactly. that, yeah. And then twirled his little pencil thin mustache. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what that was, that mustache? I really think, that, you know, I don't know if it's the truth, but Vince has always been obsessed with being the Walt Disney. Uh, he considers himself a Walt Disney. So oh, he yeah. thought that he, I think he thought that if he grows this mustache, he's going to have this like patriarchal, like Walt Disney look. The problem is, is he had so much fucking Botox and plastic surgery that it like, it just looks horrifying. It's just this. Uh, again, well, this I mean, speak about the Bruce Campbell character in Escape from yeah. L.A. I mean, it looked like Vince sure. McMahon got caught by that. Those people. Um, finally, if you have a couple more minutes, you did say you thought Salt Lake City was the best of this, like one of the best. I do um, want to give my prediction where I, what I think is going to happen with Vince, though. Okay, I, yeah, yeah. 
I do think, I think right now Vince is the reason he sold the stock. I think you're going to see Vince. Vince's final move is moving to Saudi Arabia because he's oh already God. ready. Because they would, they would pay him goodwill. Like we have a, we have like our country has a tortured relationship with that country. So like, there's no, there's like, they're like extradition for what? We're not going to investigate about 9 11. We're not going to get Vince back from Saudi Arabia to here to phase trial. That's not going to happen. So I think, I think at the very end of Vince's life is he's going to be this very like opulent Saudi king in the middle of the desert. Well, do you think he'll then start a new wrestling thing in Saudi Arabia like they tried to do with golf with the LIV in Saudi Arabia? You never say never. I don't think yeah. so, but you never – it depends on – look, I mean, there's a point – like TKO has already said that they're willing to – you know, like if sa- things in Saudi Arabia get that bad, they won't they won't do business with them. So if like – if if WWE is no longer doing business with Saudi Arabia, then perhaps. But Vince is old, man. So yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't, you know, I think that, that car's had a lot of miles on it. I don't think that guy could build up a business again. I, I just don't think that that guy is. But just, I think, but it, the, but the ego, it's like reality stars. They have such a gigantic ego that in hit, like you just never know where their head's at because they're competitors and they think, fuck everybody. I did it once. I'll do it again. You know, the WWE yeah. has been through so many different iterations throughout the decades. So I don't know. I'd be curious. Um, but it is, I mean, reading those court documents though, it's like, it is wild. of like passing that girl off to his friend and I mean, like, the whole it thing, it's, wild. Yeah, it's just very macabre and, and depressing. Yeah. Um, um speaking okay, of which- so far- <laughs> Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Yeah, brother. So, so Salt Lake City. You said it was. It really was the craziest thing. I always compare it to a David Lynch movie because it was like so insane, and all yeah. the characters were so extreme, and like I don't even think they were really listening to each other ever, which was great. And so many big personalities. Why did you like it? Uh, for all the reasons that you just you just listed, uh, I, I thought that that, that it was really fascinating that this reality show was also happening with this true crime. Uh, you know, like what I'm, I'm blanking on the name now, but the woman who's in jail for 15 years, Jen Shaw, like that this Jen Shaw and like these two stories were happening at the same time. We were seeing a reality show and we were seeing an actual, you know, at the actual like and, and they kept her go. They kept her on until yeah. until the very end when they were, you know, um, and, and now and, she's in prison and they talk about her throughout the season. But uh, we have this other girl, Monica Garcia whose big crime is she started a Finsta account against some of these other Salt Lake well, ladies. They reacted to her, the reality Von Teese, the way yeah. they reacted to her, they act, they're acting, they're treating her like Dr. Mengele and like Jen Shaw <laughs> it has got, has gotten maybe a 10th of the shit reality <laughs> Von Teese has gotten. And she's like, she was like bilking old, old people out of <laughs> yes. the life savings. She was like the government that. proved it, and they're like, right. fuck this Instagram account. They said I look tubby in an outfit. Yeah, think about how much more shit Sandoval has gotten than Jen Shaw. You know, I guess maybe it's one of these things where Jen Shaw went is go is she's in jail, so like there's not the same veris, vociferousness if it's like, well, they're she's doing 15 years, so she's been punished. Um, maybe that that's the reason why, but it is really interesting, and and I do think Mary Mary Cosby or whatever Crosby or Mary Crosby, I forget Mary her name. Cosby, Mary Crosby. Cosby yeah. I think she's like one of the greatest TV characters ever. She's so crazy. Yeah, and, but at the same time, you can't. What's great about her? I mean, you can't have her do real scenes with each anybody because she's in. Insane, she's but that, insane. Yeah. yeah like but that's why you can only use her in small amounts like she couldn't carry a show but if you put her in there she'll make fun of a couple of the other characters even if they're riding a high she'll call them ugly and they'll be like oh i was doing so well and they really it's funny it's like she's she kind of all of them oh totally totally she all of them and they keep her well around. she'll flip on a dime too she'll flip on a dime so even these ladies, they don't want the person that created the Finsta account, but Mary Cosby, they do not have a choice. She's coming back next season. And I just think that's great that even if they're riding high, somebody can come in like Mary Cosby, say two words about them and, you know, they're damaged all of a sudden. Yeah. And I mean, and then there's also the, uh, uh, you know, the element of it being in Utah and having like the Mormon church is kind of a weird character and like weird. Yeah. There's a backdrop stuff. backdrop of religion that the other shows don't have. Yeah. Like uh, what's that John Krakauer book they they made into uh, under a, the ban- under the banner under of heaven? Banner of it's heaven. Great, yeah. yeah, it's great. It's a great book. The series was was decent, but the book you re- watch read the book. The book's amazing. So it's like like it's this like that there. There's that element that's in it too, 
where it's like it's just this bizarre hodgepodge of almost like the 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 fancy modern and like the medieval primitive like combined into this show um so i love it yeah no i i love it too um but uh thank you for doing this today i know this thank usually you. Th this isn't your jam but you 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 made everybody ready, proud right? you came. made your wife proud you came you showed <laughs> up um <laughs> folks I'm going to put all of his information. His Instagram is dance period Germain D A N S T period G E R M A I N. That has his YouTube link, which is that's where we're pushing everybody to his new special is out now as you're listening to this. So go subscribe to his YouTube page. It also has his other stand up special on there as well as tons of other clips, but he is also on the road. His website has all of his dates. He's also performing at this Moon Tower uh, Festival in Austin, cool. which Austin, looks insane. Yeah. I was looking at that lineup, like the Amy lineup Sedaris, crazy. like uh, Andrew Schultz, Shane Gillis, like yeah. you're performing at that. That's going to be a awesome. Lot of, a lot of heavy hitters on that one. So I'm excited for that. Well, uh, I really, uh, I really appreciate you coming by today, and I am a Absolutely. fan of yours now for life. I hope I get to meet you one day, and uh, good luck. Come over, we'll watch, uh, yeah. we'll watch Finger Pump together. Yeah, and then do a little wrestling thing. You yeah, know? yeah, I could do, I could do both. I mean, I, I, you know, WrestleMania's around the corner. I'll hit you up. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a plan. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, so